Number five, I want you to consider that church history affirms that the baptism of the Holy Spirit continued. Church history. Irenaeus, who was a pupil of Polycarp, who was a pupil of John the Apostle, who lived from A.D. 115 to 202, wrote these words. He said, many brethren in the church having prophetic gifts and speaking in all sorts of languages through the Spirit. Wow. Origen, another early church father, said this in 185 to 2, he lived from 185 to 254. He wrote concerning the speaking of tongues in his time. Augustine in the 4th century wrote that this. He said, we still do what the apostles did when they laid hands on the Samaritans and called down the Holy Spirit on them by the laying on of hands. It's expected that converts should speak with new tongues. From the 12th to the 15th century, there were revival Bibles in southern Europe where many spoke in tongues. During the dark ages among the, the Catholic priests and such, there, it's written many, many times that people had an experience where they spoke in other tongues. Now I'll tell you, around 1900, that's about 100 and, oh, nearly 120 years ago, there was a Bible college in Topeka, Kansas. The head of the Bible college's name was Charles Parham, all right? And it was approaching Christmas holidays, and he gave this assignment to all of his students. He said, I want you to go home and study the Bible, study the book of Acts, and I want you to come back as we gather for the new year. I want you to come back with an answer to this question. Is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for today? Now, these were students of the Bible who had, you know, they were, they were just dedicated people who loved the Word of God. They were people who wanted, you know, nothing but God, nothing but to share Jesus with the world. And how many of you know that the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus? The Holy Spirit lifts up Jesus. Come on. Amen. And so what happened was they all came back together and they said to themselves, yes, we believe that this experience is for today. And they began to seek the Lord and God began to pour His Spirit out upon that Bible college. A mighty move of God ensued. And if you ever have studied this in church history, you'll understand that it moved to Los Angeles, California to a little place called Azusa Street, all right? And there was a great man of God there an African-American man by the name of William Seymour. He was blind in one eye, unbelievably. He was so humble that he would not preach or teach or share anything unless he literally stuck his head in a box because he didn't want any glory going to him. And night after night, day after day, for a period of years, thousands upon thousands of people came to that little place in Azusa Street and received the miraculous. They they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you what it did. It started a mighty missionary movement where people were called into missions to go and take the gospel around the world. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the baptism in the Holy Spirit because it is real and it is powerful. Come on. Can, I give, can we just give God a big hand of praise today? Amen. It's all the way through history. You can trace it. You can see it happen. And so if you've been taught, oh no, all of this isn't real, all of this passed away, maybe you need to investigate a little further. Maybe you need to read the Word a little deeper. Maybe you need to ask the Holy Spirit to just show you if it's real. Number six. I want us to consider the condition of the church. In our world today, mine. This is where it gets really serious to me. This is where, this is why I'm preaching this. Because you see, my heart, if you want to know what's the heart of a Pastor Bob Millsaps, don't get me wrong, I love the people in this church. I do. I love to be a pastor. I love, but my heart is for people who don't know Jesus Christ. And I have seen so many people out in the world. They are so bound. They are so caught up. And I don't really have to take a lot of minutes to tell you that evil in the world is getting worse. Come on. Is there anybody that believes that evil in the world is getting worse? You can just look around and we have rejected marriage. We have rejected the morality of, of, of that, that God, God's Word talks about. People are looking in every other direction other than God. And let me tell you something. The church of the Lord 
Jesus Christ, in particular in this United States of America, is not what I would call a powerful live church that's making huge impacts. Amen. I don't know about you, but I think we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, you say, well, Pastor, you know, there's a lot of good methods out there. There's a lot of this. You can, you can go to church growth. You can do this. You can. Let me tell you something. I want to go to the biblical method. Amen? My method is the power of the Holy Spirit. We need God's power in our life. We need the Holy Spirit to flow through us if we're going to be able to minister to a lost and a hurt and a dying world. Let me tell you, do you realize that every single year, 3,500 to 4,000 American churches close their doors? You realize that one in every three church plants in America does not make it? You know, we could go on and on. They did a study in Houston, and, and, and they discovered that in, the, in Houston, which is kind of like the buckle of the Bible Belt. How many of you are with me? That amazingly, only 15% of the people in Houston are in church today. On this very Sunday, if you went all the way through Houston, only 15% of the population is in church. Church. Let me tell you something. You could go to Chennai, India, and more people are in the house of God than that. What I'm saying is we need a revival in this country. We need a move of God in this place. We need God to show up and strengthen power. We don't need to pretend like we've got it all together. We need to humble ourselves before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and say, God, I want your power. I want your new victory. I want your authority. I want the Holy Spirit to flow through me. I want to be used by the Lord. Mm. You know, a lot of people think that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is kind of like, well, kind of like putting a carburetor, you know, a new carburetor on a car. You make the car run better, it'll function better, it'll go better, go faster. That's the wrong image. Let me tell you what's happened. The car ain't going anywhere because the transmission's broke. Amen. Amen. We need to get the transmission fixed, the thing that helps us get ourselves in gear, the thing that helps us get us moving. Amen is the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And there's so much more to this. I'm just, I'm just kind of touching the surface, man. Do you know that there are gifts of the Holy Spirit? Do you know there's the fruit of the Spirit? There's so much to this thing called the Holy Spirit that we've got to understand it and move towards it. Oh, hallelujah. I'll tell you, I know one thing. The enemy does not want me to preach this message. <laughs> Amen. But I'm going to preach it anyway. Amen. Because we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8 says this. You, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want that verse to be real in my life. I want Acts 1-8 to flow through me. When I stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't want to have them say, you know, Bob, you just, you know, you didn't have that. I'll tell you something, I want it. I don't want, to, I don't want to pretend I have it. I want to really have it. Come on. I don't want to act like I have it. I want to really have it. I want the Spirit in my life. The Holy Spirit. Would you stand with me today? Amen. I know maybe some of you have never heard a message like that. <laughs> Take it home and read the word for yourself. Yeah.